Now let's look at tying all the things we did earlier into a bit slice computer. A bit slice computer only operates on two bits. This one only operates on two bits anyway. If we needed a 32-bit computer, we would have to string together 32 of these, much the same way we did with the adders in an earlier video. The only two inputs here are A and B. And with A and B, we're going to do a variety of operations. We're going to, we can AND them, we can NOT B, we can OR them, and we can ADD them. Um, it's a simple computer, but it has operations. We have operations, we have input, and we will have output. These switches here, or input values, are you know, normally attached to a clock. The values of A and B, which might be arriving from another circuit or from memory or someplace else in our machine, may not arrive at the same time. So the values of A and B do not get into the circuit until the enable bits turn on, and they would be turned on by a clock. So it's, like, it's waiting for everybody to show up, and when everybody shows up, the clock asserts these bits and the data can get in. Of course, with them not asserted, zeros go in. But anyway, if there's ones here, they can't get in until the enable operations have been joined. So we'll turn the enables on because we want to do everything right away. All right, here are our operations. This computer has four operations. It can AND bits A and B. It can take the NOT of B. It can OR A and B. And it can ADD A and B. That is controlled by these circuits down here, these input codes. These would be our opcodes. If we were writing an assembly language, we would have four opcodes, and they would be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And by asserting those opcodes here on these control bits, we would be turning on one of those four functions. So let's start with the first one here, 0, 0. Uh, sorry, what is 0, 0? 0, 0. 0, 0 causes this line to enable. This line comes up here and enables this AND. Anything coming out of this circuit can't get forward to the output unless it goes through this AND. And that's the case of all these other outputs. They can't get there. Here's the AND controlling the ADD. Here's the AND controlling the NOT B. Here's the AND controlling the OR operation. They can't get to the final output until a signal is asserted. So if I have a 1 here and I have a 1 on the B, you can see a 1 gets to the output. A lot of other lines light up, but they can't get anywhere there because they're blocked. Um, if I have a, a 0 for the B, or if I have a 0 for the A, the AND operation produces a 0. The AND operation only produces a 1 when inputs are both 1s. Now we look at the next operation, which is NOT B. NOT B has an opcode of 0, 1, so there's the 1 there. That causes this control signal to activate. This control signal controls this AND. The output of NOT B can make it to the output of the, of the bit slice computer only if this AND is activated. And this AND is activated right now. You can see what as I toggle B, the output is changing. The value of A has no effect on the output because its control signals are off. And it doesn't matter what the value of B is, the value at the output is not affected by any value of A. Next operation is OR, and that's going to be control signals or opcode 1, 0. Turn that to a 0, turn that to a 1, and as you can see it causes this control line to activate. This control line controls the output of the A or B operation. And the output now can get to the final output because this one is enabled. If there's a 1 here, it will make it there. If there's a 0 here, it will make it there. Okay, so it's A or B, so if I turn on B, we should get a 1. We do. If I turn on A, I get a 1. If they're both on, I should get a 1. I should get a 0 if they're both off, and I do. No other circuits are affected. The carry isn't changed. Uh, nothing, nothing else is affected, because this is the only output that can make it out of the machine. Next one is the add operation, opcode 1, 1. And here's our adder here that we used from before. We've just inserted it in here. So both control signals are on. That causes this to assert. Now this line here controls a couple of things. First of all, the sum can get to the output now because this, because this AND is asserted, at least one part of it. So if there's one coming out of the add, it can make it through. If there's a zero, of course, you're going to get a zero. Um, these ANDs down here will give us output at the carry out, but they can only do so if this control line is asserted. 
So whatever the value you're trying to get to carry out, it can't get there unless this control line is turned on. So this control line controls the output of the adder, controls the output which goes, to, which is the sum to go to output, and it controls the output which is the carry out. Okay, so we should be doing adds. Now let's go up here and uh, put a one there. Well, we get a sum of one and no carry. If I put a one here, we get a sum of zero and a carry of one. Let's turn them both off. Let's say we had a carry in. Carry in results in an output of one and no carry. If I say um, A is one and the carry in, we get output of zero and a carry out, which is what we expect. If they're all on, A is on, B is on, whoops, and the carry is on, the output will be a value of one with a carry of one, which is what we expect. So that's the adder. We've placed the adder in the middle of this circuit. And you can go through and verify this adder um, is the same as we were doing on an earlier video. The only difference is we've added these additional control circuits to determine whether the output will make it either to carry out or to um, the regular system output. Now we could string a bunch of these together and make a 32-bit, 64-bit, 128-bit, doesn't matter, computer, because they basically all be stringing together as, of course, the carryouts become carry-ins, be strung together very similar to the other unit. We could also make it more complicated. We could add a, a number of additional functions here to compute a lot of other things, but this is the basic idea. This is what a CPU looks like. It's a, a lot of built-in functions and control signals. The control signals turn on the functions, and the functions operate on the input data.